It's 96. We are Hits 96. We're Chattanooga's number one hit music station. Gino D here with you. And joining me now via Zoom, the one and only Mr. Charlie Puth. Charlie, Hello. thanks so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me, Gino. Yes, how are you today? How are you doing? I'm good. You know, I, I seem to be balancing 16 plates at once. I'm trying to wrap this album, which is done, but just doing the finishing touches. It's it's very rewarding. Yes, we're super excited about that. That's uh, going to be your third uh, forthcoming album. It's called Charlie. Was there any significance in calling it that? T talk about the album a little bit. I, I, you know, there, there was, I, I'm even wearing like a, a chain that says Charlie right now. I just, I love my name and I have <laughs> never made an entire body of work that truly felt like me all the way through voice notes almost was that, but this feels completely like me with my personality with a beat behind it. And you took a little bit more time with this one. It's been a little bit since you put out an album. So, and I think with the pandemic and everything that's been going on, you probably had a lot more time to kind of connect with yourself a little bit and reflect. I did. I almost called the album Conversations with Myself for that reason, because I made all this music by having short little conversations with myself. Um, and it's it, it, with the pandemic, I, I, I wasn't playing live shows and that's the number one way of how I come up with music is live shows. So I had to turn to TikTok for the virtual audience, if that makes sense. You no, know, it absolutely does. And and I, I want to get to that, actually. We'll talk about your song, too, Left and Right. That's the one that we're currently playing here on okay. Hits. Absolutely love it. It's with uh, John Cook of BTS. Um, it's going to be off the new album, of course. But I, I like to backtrack just a little bit because we didn't get to talk to you when Light Switch came out. And that was kind of the beginning of what you said in previous interviews of the beginning of kind of your TikTok trend and approaching music in a new way. In fact, you kind of said that you feel like a new artist at this point coming out now with this new album and this new direction. Explain that a little bit, because it's, it's interesting. I, I feel like a new artist because I'm not holding anything back. I'm being TikTok and the internet, my renowned love of the internet has taught me how to be the most vulnerable version of myself. And that in tune has, no pun intended, in tune, has <laughs> made me more conscious uh, about the choices that I make of you know melodies and putting uh, lyrics against those melodies that were about real life things that happened to me that I in the past maybe wouldn't have spoken about or touched upon but I realized that many people go through the same things that I go through so why not relate to all of them sure and I think I heard that you say that this this new approach to music and this new open approach is something because of a comment that Sir Elton John made to you back in 2019 is that true <laughs> Well, it was a very, it wasn't as harsh as I made it out to be, but it was very okay. reaffirming. I knew that I had to be the one creating the music um, myself. And yep. he was basically the one that said that I have to, that that's correct. I have to be doing that. Don't involve 15 people um, on the production side of things in your music because it becomes less personal. Gotcha. And you've definitely become less, uh, more personal now because of TikTok and using that avenue. In fact, I'd like to think that you kind of started the trend of the behind the scenes look at music. Did it ever cross your mind when you were doing this, especially at the first light switch video or, or any of the videos that you're doing that maybe you were showing too much, maybe uh, giving away some... Did well, it ever I, cross your mind? I was actually told, I was actually told by some people to not give everything away and usually when i'm told to do something i do the opposite in in life and uh um in music as well maybe sometimes to my detriment but i just knew that i had to do the opposite and overshare and the result of me oversharing uh was going to be tremendous because i was writing a song in front of thousands of people which is what i used to do in person when i was playing shows before the pandemic but now I would do it virtually online. So they add a lot of value to my songwriting process. When you came up with, we'll say, we'll use Light Switch as an example. Was that planned to be a full song or were you just playing around at the time and then people obviously caught on to the TikTok thing and they wanted the full song? I just, I, I, I wanted to prove to myself that anything could be made into a song. And I didn't plan on that being becoming a actual song that's, uh, you know, that, that, that's played in Chattanooga, 
but it ended up being that and it ended up being one of my biggest songs I've ever made. And it came about because I wasn't thinking about making a song. And I thought right. to myself, if I can drive that narrative home and show people that it is in fact possible to make a song out of anything, uh, maybe I can collaborate with those future producers one day. Maybe they can help me. And then you kind of went the whole nine yards with it because you get the music video, which I love that you didn't really go with the light switch theme, which could have been really easy. Uh, you got creative with it and almost made it kind of a story. Yeah, it reminded me of like that video reminded me of the videos that I'd wake up and watch on MTV, like old ludicrous <laughs> music videos that you had to uh, hype Williams videos that you really had to follow along the storyline with. Great. And now moving on to your new song. It's uh, Left and Right. And you're, again, teaming up with Jungkook of BTS. Talk sure. about that, how that collaboration got started and, and why did you choose Jungkook uh, of everybody? Because you could probably throw your, your name in a hat and see what happens, right? Well, I'm, I'm fortunate enough where I've, I've worked with a lot of talented artists and producers, but I just I had this musical history with Jungkook and it was just always so shocking to me that we never actually went ahead and made a song together so it came about really quickly i reached out to his team and sent them the song they loved it and he sent back a perfect vocal and the rest is history and it's doing very well you got 184 million global audio streams 131 million video views are you a metrics guy do you keep up with that or would you rather not know <laughs> i i'd rather not know i've been told that it's it's uh it's it's uh what do they say it's shazamming really well because chattanooga is playing it a lot so that that means a lot to me so thank you for that absolutely and, and i like the song and i've been telling people too on the radio they have to listen to the song with headphones on because it's an yeah. experience really with the left and right and that whole aspect oh you i know that you're say, you, actually, leader, so. you actually say it on the that's that's good i actually urge yeah. everybody to to let, give the disclaimer no, for sure, because I do think it's more of an experience that way. Because, like, obviously, the left and right aspect, and I, and I was, as I was mentioning, you're, you're an audio nerd, self-proclaimed. So, talk about how you wanted to do that, or why you decided to go about that song that way. Well, I, I, I remember listening to the Beatles and hearing Paul's voice on one side of the speaker, and because that, that was due to the limitations that they had with recording, they could only use eight tracks. So sometimes the vocal track would be on the left side of the speaker. But now we have everything under the sun we can use. But I, it, it, it was always interesting to me that there was never a song that lyrically was talking about something on the left side of your speaker going to the right side of the speaker. And you would actually close your eyes and like, it, it's an immersive experience. You'd, you'd actually see the music video when you'd hear it. Well, hopefully you're not closing your eyes when you're driving. But when you're listening, right. to the, maybe when your car is parked, you can hear it on the <laughs> left side of your stereo to the right side of the stereo. Fair enough. Uh, that's going to be on the new album, as we talked about. It's called Charlie Do Out October 7th. We'll be sure to make sure and, and get that. In addition to working on your own songs, you are also quite the songwriter. You have lots of different um, titles under your belt for, for your songwriting and different credits. How do you choose between the songs that you keep and the songs that you do for someone else? Is that a tough battle for you or do you kind of get in a different mindset and say, well, this is for this, this artist. This is for this artist. How do you do that? Well, I, I like to think that I can leave my mark on anything that I'm a part of musically. You can kind of hear the Charlie-ness of, uh, like, when you listen to Stay by the Kid Leroy and Justin Bieber, you can kind of hear my piano part a little bit on there because we, we when we wrote that record, um, it's not like we were ever planning it for myself, but I'm super happy every time I hear that piano part because I know I played that, and those that little drum pattern is very... Uh, 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 very much me in a way and I know that obviously you're proud of your work but did you honestly think it would be that big of a song that song was just massive and we're still playing it on a heavy rotation here it's just well, great thank you I I I didn't know that that so I was actually told that that song wouldn't be as big as it was uh, wow. but I'm glad I didn't listen to that person <laughs> Speaking of that, is there, has been there a song and maybe it's one of your older songs or, or maybe one of your new ones um, that you found kind of surprising that the audience connected to maybe they were singing it back to you and you're like well i didn't expect this one to fly like it did yeah there was a record on my there's a song on my last record called boy i had no idea um that people would like it so much it's a like a six minute song with a jazz solo at the end of it but it's one of my most requested songs in a live setting do you think you have a reason why that is is why it surprised you do you think i i don't know i think it's different i think it's 
it's surprising but inevitable rhythmic rhythmically in the productions kind of clean it it makes you it makes you think differently about how music should be made i at least it does that for me um <laughs> lyrically sentiment wise it's a little bit unusual of a subject matter if you listen to it it's like a about a relationship with like someone much older than you it's like it, it's I, I th- so it kind of piques the interest maybe in many ways Fair enough, fair enough. The new album drops October 7th called Charlie. It has um, all these great songs on it that we're going to continue to play, and uh, we're super excited about that. Is there anything else in the future that you can talk about? I know this question always leads to like, something I can't talk about right now, but what are we looking forward to? What are you looking forward to, whether it be music-related or not? I'm looking forward to going on tour and playing this music that I have made in uh, this room and a couple other rooms for uh, these past couple of years, it's going to be great. To, the virtual stuff is great. Going viral is cool, but there's nothing like playing for even a couple hundred people. Just uh, yeah. and I'll be playing for many, many thousands of people. But I'll get I, I'll jump into any cafe and and play for anybody. There's nothing like the human to human bond. I agree, and I have to say we have a lot of diners and cafes and venues here in Chattanooga. So the next Very time true. you go through. Next time you go through, I know that uh, Nashville and Atlanta, we're right in the middle and and we can become somewhat of a passerby city, but we're trying to start that trend of being a stopper by. So if you get that idea, don't follow that. We'll we'll house you. (laughs) I love it. I I, I call it after show food because I can't exactly eat what Chattanooga (laughs) has to offer before a show. I won't be able to even like walk on stage. But afterwards, I'll pig out, and I'm excited about that. (laughs) Sounds good. Charlie Pooh, thank you so much for your time. This has been an absolute pleasure. I'm a big fan. The best of luck in all of your adventures, and uh, we can't wait for the next one. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Gina. I really appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Yeah,